Welcome back to another installment of the Intensive Car Unit. Today, we're going to be getting into the intense and nitty gritty work of removing the rear subframe from our donor patient, the Maserati Quattroporte. So let's go ahead and get to work. So in this video, you will notice that there's going to be a lot more of uh, time-lapse video and voiceover for what I'm doing, just because of the, the size of the job that's currently going on. I'm currently in the process of removing the transaxle support, which it bolts directly into the rear subframe. Um, just want to give you a heads up on this one. Anybody can do this work. It's just time consuming. Um, you got to have the right tools, which you can get relatively inexpensively places like Harbor Freight or wherever, but you do need to have the tools just to make sure you're doing things safely and efficiently. Now, you'll notice that I'm moving the transmission hoist back, and that's just to help get it centered where the weight is. That way it doesn't tilt fore or aft when I actually go to remove that rear subframe. Um, again, you'll notice some things that I do that seem like I'm doing repeat motions over and over again. I'm dropping all of the screws out, and then I'm putting some of them back in a couple of threads. That way I can actually drop the rear subframe down onto the bolts themselves before I actually remove the rear subframe. That way it just doesn't fall. I have complete control over this at all points in time, and it's just a good practice to have. That way, if something um, happens just to let loose, it doesn't fall four or five feet off the ground and land on you or something like that. So you'll notice that I'm up and down, releasing tension, putting it back up, doing up and down again, just making sure that everything is in a nice, safe fashion. Uh, I'm also at this point in time supporting the torque tube assembly. Um, that thing is pretty heavy in its own right. It's probably 70 to 80 pounds. Um, and just removing all of the stuff that attaches that to the transmission, transaxle assembly, uh, just to make it a nice controlled release. Again, you don't want something like this falling. That transmission itself, transaxle assembly, is probably 180 to 200 pounds. Um, the rear subframe with the brakes and all that stuff, you're talking probably close to 400 pounds. And uh, you got to really respect what this stuff is. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about um, the actual purpose for this. So I am actually wanting to use this transmission, and uh, that might seem kind of weird, but again, like I was talking in the previous video, I want to use the transmission because it's going to put some of that weight over the back of the axle, which will help with weight distribution. Um, again, I'm probably going to be a little nose heavy, that's fine with the final build, but my goal is to try and keep it or get it as close to 50-50 weight distribution as possible. So that's why I'm actually going through and I'm going to remove this transmission to use it for the Toyorati build. So I should be dropping it down here pretty quick, so let's go ahead and watch. All right guys, so here, the rear subframe is out of the car. Now I just gotta get it shifted over to something a little bit less 10 feet off the ground kind of thing. Um, but as you can see right there, that's the torque tube. It's a pretty stout little piece of equipment. So transaxle is out, woohoo. So this big black thing you see here is actually this rear subframe that I've pulled from the car. All of the suspension components and everything attached to that. Um, again, these things are heavy. You need to respect what they are. The reason why I'm getting the transmission off of that transmission uh, stand or hoist is just to get it in a more stable location to work on it and actually look at it, move it around, etc. And so I can use that hoist for something else later. So you'll notice this thing is not light. So you just watched me remove the subframe from above the transmission and you watched me put the transmission transaxle assembly onto the, this uh, scaffolding setup that I'm using as a makeshift workbench. So just to show you a couple of the things, it's your F1 fluid reservoir, your F1 pump, like I was talking about is right there. That's the thing that failed. All of these are various hydraulic lines that are um, pressurized when the system is on and running with that pump. Let's go around this way um, to power this. This is your manual transmission selector. So inside of here, this assembly, sorry, 
This assembly is a manual transmission. F1 selector is here. The hydraulic system powers a little servo system or uh, mechanical system in here that will twist and rotate depending, and that affects the shifter going forward, backwards, up, and down, just like a typical transmission would for a manual transmission. So um, I'm gonna remove this, all the accessories for the F1 assembly, and then give you a good visual on what the actual transmission looks like, um, pretty much how I'm gonna be using it. So there you go. Okay, as I was saying earlier, this is the F1 selector. Um, hydraulic system right here. Uh, right here is where the pump is. This is your reservoir. This is a high pressure um, reservoir, I'm guessing, um, judging by a hard line and everything else. So um, this assembly is actually um, just a bunch of hydraulic lines for the most part that are controlled by the transmission or by the um, uh, car brain. So let's see if I can get this thing off. There we go. Get it out from underneath. And there it is. Um, these things can be rebuilt. Uh, I'll see what I can do about getting into a Ferrari repurposer. But that whole assembly is the F1 selector assembly. So, ta da, I'm getting closer to having this thing be um, just a manual transmission. While I'm putting the rear subframe back in the vehicle, let's touch on a couple of key points of using a transaxle. One is weight distribution. It's to get more of the weight over the back of the car as opposed to the front of the car, which will help with cornering and braking and stuff. Another thing that this transaxle gives me is it already has a limited slip from the factory, so I don't have to figure out any aftermarket options for the Scion rear diff. Um, it's also going to be a little bit heavier duty, as well as it's going to allow me to use heavier duty axles, which will handle the weight and the loads that this car is going to be experiencing when I get it built. So we've gotten a lot accomplished in this episode as we're coming up to a wrap. We've removed the rear subframe and the transaxle assembly, and we've given a brief overview on some of the components and why we want them. Now in the upcoming episodes, we're going to talk about the brakes and the suspension components, which some of these we will also be using in this build process. Now some of that might seem a little wild, but I'll explain that stuff as time goes on so you can have a better understanding of what's actually happening. Now, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, press that call button. Uh, sorry, not call button. Press the like and subscribe button. And as always, enjoy. Maybe if I turn it the other way, it'll come loose. And it actually did. It came right out, no problem at all. So once I did that, it was done. I pulled it out. So now I'm ready to pull these control arms out and all the assembly. So.